this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In today's video, we're covering example 2 from lesson 4-4 in the Savas Realize Algebra 2 textbook. In this example, we're going to learn how to identify the least common multiple of polynomials. So remember, a least common multiple is the smallest number that each of these factors would multiply into. So if I if I took it back to like elementary school and I was trying to find the least common multiple between 2 and 5, what we would do is we would list off all of the multiples of 2 for at least for a little while, right? And then all of the multiples of, for 5. And then in that list, we would identify the first term that matches between those numbers, and we call that the least common multiple. Now, when I go to do this with factors like this, there's a little bit of a different step that we're going to follow. So our first step is going to be to actually factor any of the expressions that we're dealing with. So here I have my x plus 2 squared, which is already factored, but I do need to factor the x squared plus 5x plus 6. That factors into x plus 2 and x plus 3. So the least common multiple, or LCM, is going to be an expression that includes all of the terms required to make either of these. So I know that I'm going to need an x plus 2 squared for this one, and I also need an x plus 3. However, I don't need to add an additional x plus 2 for the one that's already in here, because there's enough of them here. So what I do when I'm considering this is I think about it as a set of Legos. And so I'm going to call x plus 2 red Legos. And I'm going to call x plus 3 blue Legos. And so my least common multiple is like the Lego set. So it's what Legos I have in my possession. Whereas these up here, the factors, these are my um, Lego patterns. So essentially what I need is I need enough pieces in my Lego set to build whichever pattern I would like. So that's why I needed at least two of the x plus twos in my Lego set. But I didn't need an extra x plus two because I, I already have enough to satisfy this pattern. However, I did need the x plus three. So that's kind of a way to think about it if my explanation mathematically doesn't make sense. All right, so now let's try this one. So I'm going to factor each of these expressions. So x cubed minus 9x is going to factor into x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. All right, And I'm getting that because I recognize that when I factor out the x, I had a difference of squares. And then I used our difference of squares formula. On this one, I know I'm going to have an x minus and an x plus because my minus falls down and I need opposite signs. And what multiplies to 15 that subtracts to make 2? That's 5 and 3. And then on this last one, they have an x in common. So I'm going to factor my x out. So these are the kinds of Legos that I need to add to my Lego set, essentially, or to my LCM. So checking it out, I know that I need an x, so I'm going to go ahead and put an x in here. I know that I need an x plus 3. I know that I'm going to need an x minus 3. And I know that I'm going to need an x minus 5. And so my LCM is all four of those factors all together. Alrighty. 
And now let's check out some of these other ones. So the factoring here at A seems a little bit complex. Um, I know I can't factor it by grouping because when I look at it, there's not a common pattern, right? There's a 20 and a 27, sorry, a 27 and a 27 here at the last term, but there's not, um, there's not matching coefficients on the first two terms. So I can't factor it using factoring by grouping. So most likely, this is going to be some kind of pattern that is used with um, like Pascal's triangle and uh, polynomial distribution. So factoring this one is a little bit of a bear. Now, I could see with the 9 and the 27s, I'm probably going to have x plus 3 as a factor. That's just my guess here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use synthetic division real quick and see if I can divide a 3 out here. So let's give it a shot. Now remember I, I have a negative there, so I, I have a 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, which leaves me with a 6. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. And when I subtract, I get a 9. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27, which gives me a 0 here. And so when I divide that x plus 3 out, that leaves me with x squared plus 6x plus 9. And that is a uh, perfect square trinomial. That's x plus 3 times x plus 3. And so the factoring that I did there, that is um, kind of something to just identify with with more practice. You know, seeing that there's that common number of 3 between the 9s and 27s is really what kind of saved my bacon there. Now this next term, right, or this next expression, I should say, this one can just be factored like normal because my x squared doesn't have a number in front of it. I bring down my minus, and to get a negative 21, I need opposite signs. And then I ask myself, what multiplies to make 21? that subtracts to make 4, and that is 7 and 3. So with that effort, now we can identify our LCM. So from my first expression, I know that I need x plus 3, and since I have 3 of them in that first expression, I'm going to have x plus 3 cubed. And then in my second expression, I have an x minus 7, so I need to include that in my LCM here. Now part B, part B makes it a little bit spicy in that they, um, they're including x's and y's. And a lot of students tend to be uncomfortable with, um, with factoring things that have two variables in them. So hopefully um, you guys get enough practice with this type of thing to, to help you out. And I feel like I'm going to need a little more room, so we're just going to scoot that up just a pair. So here, I see that I have a 10 and a 10. So in my first term here, I'm factoring out 10. And what ends up happening is I have a difference of squares here. And that factors as x plus y times x minus y. So there is our first term, or our first factor, I should say. So now on this one, I see my 15, my 30, and my 15. And so I can actually factor 15 out of this expression. So I get x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And that's following the uh, perfect square trinomial pattern. And so this is going to turn into x minus y squared. Uh, this last one's a little more complex to factor. Um, it's not a, uh, not a perfect square trinomial, right? Because if it was, this would be, um, this wouldn't, 
this wouldn't be a three. <laughs> I believe it would be, um, it doesn't matter. It wouldn't be a three there because that doesn't follow the pattern that we need, the two X, Y pattern. So we have to think about other ways that we would go about factoring it. So I know that I'm going to have at least an X and an X, right? Because that's how we make X squared. And I know I'm going to have at least a Y and a Y to get the Y squared here. I know my plus falls down. And to get another plus here, I have to have matching signs. And then what multiplies to make 2 that adds to make 3? Well, that's 1 and 2. So the, the factoring here is a little bit strange, but if you pretend that the y's aren't there, you could kind of get it. And then the final thing that I tend to do is I tend to break apart the coefficients here. So that 10, I'm going to call 2 times 5. And that 15, I'm going to call 3 times 5. And I'm going to leave this one as x plus y and x plus 2y. Alrighty. So now we're set, and now we can create our LCM, or our least common multiple. This one's probably going to be pretty lengthy, just because there's so many terms going on here. So I see that I need a 2. And each of these has a 5, so I'm going to have a 5. And this one also has a 3. So in terms of coefficients, I need a 2, a 3, and a 5. So now let's check out some binomials. So I have an x plus y in at least two of these. And I have an x minus y here, but I also have an x minus y here being squared. So in my LCM, I'm going to make sure to have that that factor listed twice. And then my last one, I have my x plus 2y. Now kind of common practice when we identify our least common multiple here is then we multiply back together all of our coefficients. So my least common multiple here, 2 times 5 is 10 times 3 is 30. And then we're going to just keep all these guys just as they are. So there we have it. So that is how to find a least common multiple when we have some polynomials. And we're going to use that in our next example to help us to, to find our least common denominator when adding rational fractions. Until next time.